This is a video abstract of a paper entitled Severe Acute Pancreatitis Capillary Permeability Model Linking Systemic Inflammation to Multi-Organ Failure. Acute pancreatitis is a syndrome caused by an acute injury to the pancreas followed by a clinically relevant inflammatory response. Severe acute pancreatitis, which occurs in about a third of patients, includes persistent systemic inflammation, measured as SEERS, with variable multi-organ failure in about a third of those with SEERS occurring at 24 to 48 hours after the onset of pain. The only effective treatment of multi-organ failure is fluid resuscitation, but it is not known in the early stages who needs it, which type of fluid they need, or how much. New insights are critically needed to design effective therapies to minimize the morbidity and mortality. We hypothesize that multi-organ failure is caused by the loss of endothelial barrier to large plasma proteins. A capillary with three dimensions of permeability can be modeled using electrolytes to measure the small pores, albumin to measure medium-sized pores, and non-albumin plasma proteins, which are very large, to measure a variable large pathogenic pore representing the breakdown of the endothelial barrier. Fluid shifts can then be tracked using compartment models. We developed a compartment model to assess the effect of changing capillary permeability on fluid shifts in multi-organ failure. Under normal conditions, we modeled three compartments, a vascular compartment, an interstitial compartment, and a third space compartment that normally has very little fluid in it. Under normal conditions, the heart pumps blood to the capillary bed where fluid and electrolytes can exit through small pores into the interstitial space. Some albumin also enters the interstitial space. In the low pressure side of the capillary bed, the red blood cells, albumin, and non-albumin protein produce an oncotic pressure to draw fluid back out of the interstitial compartment and into the vascular compartment for a return to the heart to complete circulation. There is a steady state in the capillary bed, the interstitial space, and the third space because albumin and other proteins that slowly leak out of the capillaries are returned to the heart through the lymphatics. In the multi-organ failure, we hypothesize that there is a third pore represented by number C in which the non-albumin protein and additional albumin leak out of the vascular compartment and into the interstitial space. In this case, there is minimum oncotic pressure, so fluid never returns to the heart, resulting in hypovolemia, with fluid distributing to the third compartment and lost from the circulation and overwhelming the lymphatics, and so the large oncotic proteins never return to the heart. This is what we predict causes the multi-organ failure seen by a fluid flux out of the vascular compartment and into the third compartment. To test this hypothesis, we recruited patients with acute pancreatitis from the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center and consented them for observational studies. We measured pre-admission and daily biomarkers, including BUN and creatinine for kidney function, hematocrit, albumin, and total protein for intravascular biomarkers and calculated non-albumin plasma protein by taking the total protein and subtracting albumin. Biomarker time courses were assessed using a linear mixed model and all images that were available were reviewed for pancreatic necrosis. Result. The first thing we looked at was the kidney. On the left is the blood urea nitrogen, and on the right is the creatinine, measured daily since the onset of pain. What you see is that in multi-organ failure, both the BUN and the creatinine rise during the hospitalization. 
What was interesting is that the ratio between BUN and creatinine in multi-organ failure stayed relatively constant. This means that the kidney failure was from pre-renal azotemia, suggesting that there was low perfusion of the kidney due to hypovolemia. The most important finding was the changes in the vascular compartment. Shown here is the change in albumin on the day since the onset of pain and the change in total protein. It is known that the albumin drops in patients with multi-organ failure, but here we show that the total protein also drops in patients with multi-organ failure at a rate that is significantly greater than in patients without multi-organ failure. What is new and important is measuring the non-albumin plasma protein. What is seen is that on the onset of pain and by day one, the protein actually increases in concentration. And after day one, there is a precipitous drop in non-albumin protein as the large molecules leave the vascular compartment and are not returned. This is the third pore size shown in our previous model, suggesting the loss of the non-albumin plasma proteins and albumin into the interstitial space and into the third space without return to the vascular compartment. We believe that this is the underlying cause of the fluid shifts resulting in multi-organ failure in patients with severe acute pancreatitis. In conclusion, in severe acute pancreatitis, the increased permeability of capillaries to albumin and non-albumin plasma proteins cause the loss of plasma oncotic pressure. This results in pulmonary edema with acute respiratory distress syndrome, in hypovolemia, in hemoconcentration, in hypotension, in pre-renal azotemia, and the acute kidney injury, and in pancreatic necrosis from hyperperfusion of the pancreas. Future research must focus on endothelial injury and treatments to sustain intravascular oncotic pressure and vascular volume. The corresponding author can be reached at these addresses. Thank you for your attention.